Colombianness of his accent. He needed this to issue the emergency passport necessary to expedite the deportation. Palomino entered the consul's office escorted by the deportation agent and the consul's secretary, who took such pity on Palomino that she collected money from the consulate staff in order to buy him a shoe on the Chinese leather band of 46th Street. Both of Palomino's hands were cuffed to the crutch. When he entered the office, he was overwhelmed by the amount of Colombian paraphernalia hanging from the walls. Palomino could see the green expanse of Central Park through the window behind the consul, and thought that he wouldn't see it again for a very long time. The raspy voice of hit Colombian singer Jose Benito Arras crackled from the consul's turntable. Palomino recognized the lyrics of El Hombre Caiman, a nappy cumbia song about a man whose longing had morphed him into a caiman, who then roamed the streets of the coastal city of Barranquilla, bellowing in a human voice. Palomino realized he hadn't heard the song since leaving Colombia in the 40s, and became distracted deciphering the song's three-drum pattern. The consul pushed aside miniature chivo buses and San Agustin Cetuas from his desk. He opened the INS folder and laid out the fingerprint cards and the profile pictures of Palomino the deportation agent had taken. How am I supposed to know you're Colombian if you have no identification and you sound more Puerto Rican than anything else? The consul said in Spanish. He loosened the Windsor knot in his name blue tie. I feel more Puerto Rican than anything else, and I've never been in Puerto Rico, Palomino said. The consul secretary entered the office and asked the deportation agent if he could have a look at Palomino's new sneaker shoe. Your deportation order says you're a criminal and a subversive, the consul said. I've been nothing but a patriot in both of these countries, consul. You were born where? Medellin, Comuna San Diego. A long way from that dump to New York City. Family in Colombia? The only family I ever had that in Korea, Palomino said. The deportation agent excused himself and snuck out of the consul's office. You're Thai. You're a fellow conservative, Palomino said. Your suit. I should have known it. The consul raised his eyebrows. What have they done to you? The same things we did to leftists during La Violencia, only more sophisticated. Please, I need to use the phone. Being Colombian is an act of faith, consul. Do it quickly. The consul stepped the temporary passport and stuffed a small wad of 100 Colombian pesos into the booklet. It's not much, but you'll need these when you get to Bogotá. Palomino dialed if he won this number. There was no answer. He dialed them into the street. Dick Loco informed him that Etiwanda hadn't been seen since the day he disappeared, and that everyone had assumed Palomino had finally gathered the courage to declare his love for her. I thought you two had eloped, Dick, Dick Loco said. If you see her, you tell her I love her. I'm coming back before the mambo craze is over. It already is, Dick Loco said. Descarga miniatura. I have traveled through an ice storm in a bus, sitting in the back with the Negroes because I have to see you. I have come back to New York, all the way from Wavy Wheat, Kansas, from Fort Leavenworth, from visiting Sotomayor, one of the privates from the 65th Infantry who got a court martial after that mess with the white officers at Jackson Heights. He told me when I told him about you, you don't have a day purchase, you don't know when you're going to die, or when they're going to take your freedom away. You have to live in the day, he said. Words to live by. This is why I have come, with a salute, to tell you I have loved you in silence before you and Cuban Pete leave from California, to tour the stages of Los Angeles and San Diego, dancing for Nora Morales, exporting this mambo thing. This is why I stand here in the lobby of the Mutuna Street with these foreign things in my hand, 12 red roses, why I prick my fingers more than an intelligent person should. This is why I stand here smelling the way men should smell, why my suit is pressed and starch, why I pawn my camera and my records to buy you this bracelet. And I look around the Montuna Street at the women who steer clear of me, and I think this bracelet is woefully inadequate, but it's all I have. Then you emerge, majestic, your waist so thin, your hips so full, but I imagine you a medieval princess, and a court of children trails behind you, keeping the train of your dress from dragging on the dirt, but your dress has no train. It has a void in the front that shows the curvature of your breasts and the valley between them, and you smile at me. You wave, and I start to wave back when Dick Loco taps me on the shoulder, saying, it's me she's waving at. And I wonder if Dick said anything to you, being the club owner. I wonder if he said anything about the love of hell for you, which I foolishly disclosed to him, because I couldn't help it, because despite the fact that I don't like to talk, to tell anything to anyone about my life, I can't shut up about you. Dick Loco grabs you by the waist as if it was normal, as if you weren't precious, as if touching your skin was an akin to kissing the feet of a Jesus for a Catholic. Nora Morales does what he does best. He takes the piano, the cue and repeat the wood floor. He does the hand blade to the cloudy. You shimmy, you smile. All of the men that frequent this establishment, he is the one I respect the most, because he is married to a woman who is not of his race, because he has danced the mambo in front of the Queen of England, because he hasn't tried to fuck you, because he hasn't tried to get you drunk. And this is the perfect opportunity. You are resting between sets while Cuban Pete cradles his baby girl. So I plant my crutch like I'm the Marine planting the flag in that picture of Iwo Jima. And I soar up to you as if there was an army behind me, 
resolute. Today this ends. Today I will finally tell you how I feel for you, that I no longer want to hear you complaining about every other man. I will say to you, I have loved you. You are powder in your shoes, and I am only an arm's length away when you look up and ask, who are those four? And I halt, and I can't say that for you. Did you finally find a lady friend, Palomino, you say? Okay, I won't embarrass you. You're turning red. My leg is there. It is materializing, coming back to me, hurting as much as it did when it pulverized, and I can't think. I can't say a simple sentence to you. And I amend my message. I will make it sound more tentative. I will say, I think I'm in love with you, but I don't. If Loco swoops in from behind you and slaps your ass, and then he laughs and he's put a reeking Jew away as he hands you a cuba libre, and I don't know if he can do it. Or he can swing his hand at full speed towards one of your most seductive, most private parts when I can't say a simple sentence to you. I don't know how he doesn't save at that moment. Well, he doesn't stretch it till eternity. I thrust a bracelet into my pocket and you see me, but you don't think any, anything of it. I know, because why would I think? What would possess me to think that I have a chance with you? When every man in the Montuno street, every man with an unscarred face, every man with two legs, melts over your Mediterranean eyes, over your Middle Eastern skin, I go outside and burn these flowers to do this all over again when you get back to New York. Black consumes the ash and roses as no one sobers the piano for our life. Thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you for supporting our MFA readings um, and our three wonderful writers. If you're interested in more information about other MFA readings coming up this semester, hint, hint, or the Florida Review or the MFA program or other readings coming up here at the bookstore, please stay and talk to me and Ryan Rebus. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>